Welcome everybody, and as you can see from the clapboard, it is take two, and that's pretty awkward. Now, welcome everybody, it is PMP Weekly, episode 81, uh, it is 27th of April, 2020, and, and we already actually, this is a retake, because we already talked roughly 15 minutes, uh, pretty <laughs> passionate about today's topic, and then we realized that we're not recording, which, yeah, that's that was a good thing. It happens. <laughs> It happens, yeah. It's it's not definitely not the first time and or the last time. But before we actually go there, let's go this uh, quick recap. PMP Weekly uh, is a weekly uh, podcast and a web blog or video blog, web blog, video blog, um, uh, where we actually talk about what's happening in the community. We typically have quite often we have a visitor in the in the PMP Weekly. This time we don't. We have a special episode where we concentrate on certain other areas. Uh, we'll come back on that one in a second. Um, I'm Vesa Yvonen. I'm a program manager from the OneDrive SharePoint engineering side and I, I run among the other things uh, the PMP initiative from the Microsoft side and uh, with me as a co-host Waldek and I am not I am not on the Microsoft team on the other hand <laughs> I work at Rancor I am head of product there where we built uh, things that help people validate quality of the things that they in how they extend Microsoft 365 yep. um, and today we will talk about open source. We will talk about our experiences from the open source projects and initiatives in, in which we are involved and yep. how they translate to basically any kind of idea that you might have and you might want to um, see in fruition. Yep. Building, really building a community around the, your ideas and building people contributing to your ideas or working as a team uh, towards whatever is your idea. So um, obviously open source is, is really good example of this stuff. Quite often open source projects start with a idea of a one person, but then some of them grow to be big, big uh, open source projects and some are not actually getting really that much attention. So that, those are the things what we actually kind of talk about today. Why is that? And, and why some things are being successful and why some things are not successful. Before we actually go there, um, uh, let's actually do a quick check on Waldek. What's your background related on uh, open source projects and, and community building? So what uh, what makes you be qualified to actually talk about this stuff? So back when I was six, I had this toy car that I don't know. <laughs> no, I've been, um, I've been um, Microsoft MVP now for, if I will be renewed this year, that will be my 12th year. So I have some experience sh sh um, sharing my experience and the things that I know in a meaningful way, apparently, for some time. But by itself, that, that doesn't really say much. Why? Because being an MVP, like you can be awarded MVP for many things. You can write a book, you can organize an event, you can organize local meetups, you can write blog posts, software samples, anything and everything. So there are a number of things you can do for which you would be recognized as an MVP. And open source is just one thing, but the common thing across all of them is that you help drive community, you help others, right? Yeah. Without, with, without expecting in a way anything in return. Right, so that is the one hand. Two, um, I've been at some point there was there was the Yeoman generator for Office add-ins, and that was my first adventure, I believe, with G GitHub and open source. Yeah, like before that, already for quite some years, I would share samples, I would share tools, would, but none of that was really open source. That would be they would live on Co Codeplex, I think that was the name. Uh, but I wouldn't really, I don't think back then I shared code, code. I, I would share only tools because like open source wasn't really, at least in the Microsoft space, it wasn't yeah. a thing. Yeah. Right. So and plus like, the fact that you were kind of a, that the mentality was also the fact that, well, this is something which I actually built by myself. Why would I share it to somebody else? Because well, this really. is. Well, really like, I, 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 at, I at, at least for me, my thinking didn't really even go as far. It was like, Hey, do we have this issue? We cannot do this. Here's a cool yeah. tool to do this. Period. Yeah. Problem you solved. Know. And then, you like, there, there was no, yeah. Like, exactly. Exactly. like, no one, like, it really, really occurred to me. I mean, I was 20 or something. Yeah. Like, so I was like, you know what? This is cool. Let's, let's do it. And then let's do 20 million other cool, cool things. <laughs> so, um, so that was like, so my first adventure with GitHub and open source was with the uh, Yeoman generator for Office add ins. Then for a short while, I worked on the uh, ng office UI fabric, which was yep. the Angular 
uh, implementation of Office UI fabric. Yep. And then at ASD some point, as well. exactly. Yeah. And then at some point, like I'm on a Mac. At some point, I recall that uh, Microsoft would announce the support for CDNs in O365. Yeah. Like cool. I remember except, that. <laughs> except one thing. The only way to enable them on your tenant was what? PowerShell. Windows PowerShell. That works only on Windows. Like if you think like like spinning up a, v, a VM to run one command in PowerShell <laughs> just to change something like that's not very efficient. Yeah. So I thought, you know what? Like I want to I want to have a different way of doing that. And so I thought like, what if there was a CLI, a command line tool that allows you to do basically what you can do in PowerShell, but then on, on any OS, whether you are on Mac or, or Windows, whether you are on a desktop or in a CI, C, CD case, basically anywhere. Manage your tenant, manage other things. And that is like this year, we're going third year in that I'm co-managing that with three other guys. Um, and along the road, I picked up some experiences around that. Yep. And it's good to share those experiences so that those I who have so. their own <laughs> ideas and, and looking into doing this and they, they can actually learn from other people's mistakes. So that's all about sharing is caring, right? That's um, it. There we go. Um, <laughs> you, what, what about you? What qualifies you to talk about open source? Uh, yeah, no, um, so, so I'm... I'm <laughs> Now, well, there, there there has been multiple about like communities and and all of that stuff which we've done in the past. But really, if you think about the open source side of the house, we started the, the nowadays the the Microsoft 365 BMP initiative. It it was originally Office the Office 365 Dev BMP and then SharePoint BMP and now Microsoft 365 BMP. We started that actually internally uh, back in uh, when was it uh, around uh, autumn uh, uh, August 2013 um, with the names of gaps, which is actually interesting. Yeah. So because it was really there to address gaps related on the SharePoint adding model first, um, and then we started collecting samples because I was working as a consultant, um, and those samples were available in our internal codeplex um, and it, I think it was called uh, toolbox at the time um, and then uh, our marketing actually really got interested on on hey wait a minute so you guys have actually really thought through what the enterprise customers need um, and why wouldn't we actually announce this to be available more broadly uh, and back in Actually, SPC, SharePoint Conference uh, 2014 uh, in Las Vegas, we announced, announced the project to be available. And that came to be then the Office 365 developer patterns and practices, and then that has grown quite a lot over time. Um, already at the, at the time when we started implementing the first samples, even internally, we we actually created the CSM extension, uh, and it, it has gone through plenty of variations, but it really started as a open source extension for CSAM to addressing gaps which the normal API was missing. And, and rather than everybody implementing the same thing by themselves, we, we had a centralized component where we started basically pushing all of the stuff in. And that grew to be then the BMP CSAM core, which some of you know, some of you probably don't know, but it, it's also the component behind of the BMP PowerShell, which is being used, uh, and both of being used more than 40,000 tenants within every single month. Um, it's just mind-blowingly successful nowadays. But again, it took a while. It took actually an amazingly long time that thing to really start having use it. Same with PMP PowerShell, same with CLI. It's it's an interesting thing where you see that same trend and same model to happen with all of the projects uh, which we've been running in the in the BMP side. And nowadays, and the BMP is basically we're running like what would I say, 15 different open source projects uh, with 20 different people. Uh, some being internal Microsoft people, some being external uh, people MVPs. Um, and we have our own internal uh, team uh, discussions and where we run the program and then think about the next steps. And then from a contributor perspective, I, I think it was 1,300 contributors to date uh, in, nice. the, in the different repos. And that's a lot. That's 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 pretty big number. I think we have like 80,000 visitors every single two weeks in the GitHub repos, which is pretty decent as well. So. Exactly right. So we have one PNP, 15 projects, 20 maintainers, roughly 1,300 or so people who contributed to it, whether it's a fixing a comma or creating a new commandlet or new method, extension method or whatnot, or sample. And then we have 
army of people who benefit of that every single month in their work, yeah. whether that's by watching the videos, tutor following tutorials, looking at samples, reusing code, using code, anything and thing, thing and everything, right? Because it's yeah. actually like it's so many things that are part of this PMP umbrella. Yeah, it's 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 pretty amazing. Every single every now and then I, I write a, a a quarterly reviews or whatever to my own leadership or internal messaging, and it's it's really wild to actually start always listing things as oh that thing, oh that thing, oh that thing. So it's it's been growing a lot, and obviously it wasn't this big uh, when we started. It started as a small grassroots effort of of with the mentality of sharing is caring, which just per idea of hey it's just stupid that we don't share the code and learnings and things which we do on the day-to-day -day basis with customers so let's start sharing and let's see where it actually ends um, and it hasn't ended so that's pretty okay <laughs> so for folks who do not know that like what is your role in pmp uh i'm uh, how would i put it uh, there's 20 people i run it team. <laughs> Um, I'm the link between the 20 people and the, the engineering, let's put it this way. So I'm the, the main contact between internal Microsoft people and then uh, the 20 people in the team. Um, some people say that I, I coordinate that or I own it, but I, I, that's, I would say it's a wrong way of putting that. I don't want to claim that uh, status uh, as such, because I think together what we were much more important, uh, powerful. and and. To be honest, with all due transparency, number one objective what I've been having from a day one, and, and Waldek knows this, is that at some point, if I would just disappear, things would move on without any impact. And that's that's one of the things which I've been trying to get this model from a day one. And it doesn't mean that I'm leaving. No, 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 not at all. But it's the mentality of, hey, let's let's try to think and make sure that it's it's um, self-sufficient, so to say, and the individual project can live by themselves. There's conducts and of conducts and there's processes, there's a tooling, there's a model where the system will just continue if something would happen. You never know. So it's just one of those actually good practices, which is not in our top five list, by the way, but it's, well, well actually, it is kind it of is. there. It actually yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fair point, fair point. But yeah, so I guess, so I guess this is the, is this the right point for us to talk about that? Yeah. Talk about our experiences. Yes. Yes. Let's actually start with the with the list number one. So what we're going to do with this is is we're going to put the text on the on the video, and this is also, by the way, guidance for our video guy, uh, who's processing the video. So we're going to put the text <laughs> on the video, um, and then let's leave it there, and we can talk about the learnings around that one. But number one, um, actually, when it, when it, how to get started? This really the number one thing, obviously, is to get the idea out side of your head. Put it in a format where people can understand what is the idea. Um, because quite often people have awesome ideas and, and some of you might wake up every single morning like, holy shit, I have this thing up full of whatever notes. Um, and I uh, maybe we should do a beep on that one. This is a family show. But anyway, so you have a lot of ideas and then how do you get those ideas actually moving is that you share them. You you really want to share them with others um, so that you get things moving and stuff actually start gradually at least moving. But it is really around the fact that unless you tell it to the other people, nobody's going to be able to help you. Nobody's going to be able to validate even the idea. Um, and in my case, as an example, I'm a really good example. I have a massive imposter syndrome. Um, so, and people don't necessarily even believe that's true, but it, it's just massive. Uh, and going away and breaking the, let's say, the barriers of being open enough to share the idea is super important. It's not about your pressures. The precious thing is not precious if nobody knows about it. The, the, the super precious thing might get a precious when people understand how awesome it is. Well, so I guess that there are two sides to the coin, right? So sure. um, like one is what we see a lot is that somebody builds a sample code. Like, like, like nowadays it's more, let's say, a common thing to put your code out there, either on your blog, GitHub and whatnot. Yep. But there is no comments, no docs, no images. No, like, like yeah. this, this is sample, there's a link. And then you're like, okay. I was like, if you don't explain, well, the idea is still in your head and you, you get it. You as the author of that piece of code, you get it. You know why. You know exactly what problem is solved. You know why it's, this is the right approach. You know why it's better than 10 other approaches you might have taken or yeah. maybe 10 other tools that are there. But nobody else does. Like people yeah. cannot really look into your head right so you have to help like it's a key thing if you want something from others like you put it out there for a reason 
And the way I see it is... You need to tell them what is the reason. Exactly. Exactly. Like, get it out. Like, get out of your own way. Like, help others to get it. Because, like, the more people will see it they and and get it the bigger the benefit and also the bigger acknowledgement for your for your skills your um craft your your work right and i mean like it's not not like that that might be directly the reason for you because maybe you put code out there and you don't really care about whether somebody sees it or not but then make it for the sake of that it will help others to find it you will help others to benefit of your thought and time you spent on it yeah right but and it, it's, it all comes down like yeah, you need to help people get it. Absolutely, and and like I said, it, it's the from a individual perspective. You you might think like it's obvious. Well, whatever I have here, it's super it's obvious. Simple. Look on it's the simple. It's obvious. Exactly. But making it super easy so people understand what it is will help them to then oh, this is what it is, and what if I would do blah 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 blah, and then you are actually already collaborating because you help him or her to understand. And uh, what is it all about? And and then she can actually provide input and suggestions and voila, exactly. there's already an yeah. awesome start. But also, so even the thing, like like things that we perceive as simple. Imagine how much time have you spent already thinking about it, thinking, building it, looking at other things. Yeah. Because you've done all the work, it's simple now. But if you were, if if I would imagine that you don't know, I don't know, you don't know how to ski, and you look at somebody who's done it for years, like. Dude, it's simple. Like you stand on it and you go. Like like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> right? So it's 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 as everything, even a car. Like yep. the first time you get to a car, there's handles, there's knobs, there's the road, there's speed, there's steering wheel. There's like the twenty million things you have to pay attention to. And then the more you drive, the more you learn. Well, I don't need to do everything in advance. I can plan things. Sure. Like there is intersection, there is light. So if I slow down already, I don't. I will not be in. Like, like there is rhythm to it. But it's yep. only after you learn. After you learn it, it's easy. Before it's but, not. So now, now let's actually talk about also on the on the so making the idea available. It's also around the existing. Let's say if we think about GitHub and everything about open source, it's also the fact that um, in your projects, uh, like in the CLI case, CLI is an awesome case of this one. Um, you actually have an issue list where you put and ideas and suggestions and ideas and ideas. And that that's a really powerful thing. We talked about this one a few times in the call already, but you wanna make sure that people can spend whenever they have the one extra hour or two hours, they can go to the issue list and they can actually yeah. say that, oh, oh, that's an idea. That's an area where my help is requested. And I have this one hour, so, oh, that's yeah. one hour, roughly an up an hour thing. Let's actually make that happen. Yeah. Yeah, as a, yeah, exactly. Because like you can see it in two ways, right? Like imagine I have an an hour off, or I have some 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 time. I can either spend that time clicking through the code base, trying to understand, wrap my head around it. And if it's not something that I know already that I want to improve, by by the time I arrive at something, the time is gone. Yeah. yeah. So eventually, at the end of the day, I didn't do anything. Yeah. I just spend time reading through the code. And maybe yeah. the next time I have some time hour, some time off, maybe I will still remember that and I will then be able to help then. But that's a big if. Yeah. On the other awesome. hand, it's exactly as you say. If there are specific things, some are simple, some are big. Depending on the time and your skills and how uh, accustomed you are to working with that, you just pick one and say, hey, I have experience with MMS and there is a thing around MMS. Maybe I can fix that. And maybe I will help others. And that's like a very specific tailored thing to ask. Yeah. And that helps others to help you. It helps you to advance the thing for everybody, to improve yeah. it for ev- ev- everyone. But, but it requires, exactly, yeah. but it requires you to get out, out of your own head. Absolutely. And, and then others can evolve your stuff and you'll evolve the other stuff and then we will be much smarter because we've been collaborating together but it's no. it one of the points sorry sorry one yeah, of the points on the on the uh under this first tip was also that anything is better than nothing and um, to stay a oh, statement yeah. which we which we did and this is actually something where which is super important as well so quite often we hear that yeah but it's it's it wasn't impactful enough i didn't consider the sample as a i didn't submit it that because i i don't i don't find it so cool or um the 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 people are actually submitting uh submitting things to my github things and small typos and and fixes of commas and whatever 
But those are things are actually also important as well, yeah. because they are actually encouraging. If you go and process them politely, uh, it encourages people to come back because they, it really yeah. helped them to actually fix those things. And plus, plus there's, it's a true improvement because in, it improves yes. how easily people can read your stuff. If there is no grammar yes. errors, no typos, it also expresses that it's neat that there is a, that, that it's clean that it's tidy that people really pay attention to it the, so the what the perceived quality will go up and it not might be per se the thing you care about but there are tons of folks who actually do like why yeah. do we look more things that look nice than things that they don't right because yeah. we are visual like we pay attention to quality to how things feel and yeah. that's exactly right. So even those small things that might not feel like much, yeah. they they contribute to the overall goal of getting people like bringing your idea for, forward. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. So so one one could actually say we used to say I would use the term hygiene of code or hygiene of project, and yeah. which actually is a pretty okay way of, of putting this. It's the the overall feeling of things. Uh, is it? Is it looking yeah. okay or is it not? Now let's go to the second um, second uh, tip or second discussion point, which is the target the idea uh, for the people who need it. Um, mm -hmm. So this this really is around target the idea for people who actually need it. So this really is around the fact that, well, well, it actually starts from the from the some of the comments which we've been seeing uh, getting every now and then is that well, my stuff is in GitHub. Why isn't anybody contributing? Or hey, it's mm -hmm. open source. It's in GitHub. And those are those are quite typical statements. And first of all, if it's in GitHub, it doesn't mean that it's open source. Um, that's a separate a side discussion. Let's come yeah. back on that one. Um, but the fact that it's in GitHub and it would be open for contributions, it doesn't mean that the people who would like to contribute would know about it. Again, from a persona perspective, from subjective like thinking, everybody you might think that everybody knows what you're doing, but they don't. Nobody and actually really too, easily find it. And actually, too, not only that they do not know, they do not care. Yeah, that's People, true. As well. Seriously, despite all the things that yeah. we are nowadays, like we overshare on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, people do not care about your work. It's like one ear in, the other out. Like next, yep. like they might be like, yeah, like this, like that, this is cool. 10 minutes after, they forget. They do not yep. live your life. Yes. If something is important to me, that is my passion, it drives me. It doesn't drive any, anyone else, seriously. Yes. People yes. do not care. And I, and I don't mean it in a, let's say, nihilist or a, like really bad way. Like, no, people don't <laughs> care about you. No, it's just a reality of life. People yes. care about themselves. And the sooner you acknowledge that, the sooner you will be like, hey, if I actually have something cool that I want to share, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. One, because there is so much being shared. Whatever you say is going to be lost yep. in all the noise that we create together. So yep. you have to rinse and repeat, like share, share, share over and over again. Because like, well, like what are the odds that you will see the one tweet that I share today if I only do it once a month? Yeah. It's what, gone. what was the statistics? A uh, tweet has a life cycle of 15 minutes or something. What? So, a second. Yeah, it's, it's just a few seconds on a screen. Yeah. I, I think there's good statistics around yeah. this one um, related on the on the use. And that's why actually making sure that things uh, are visible for those people who is your audience. But let's come back on the rinse and repeat yeah. in a second yeah. as well. But yeah. but really also the fact that um, you, if you have something that something useful, some audience, you need to go and, and actually promote your stuff for the audience. Because that's way exactly. you basically make your stuff interesting for them. And then they will actually feel committed on helping. And, and that's a really know, important thing. Yeah, and you actually know that these people have the same issue. Like originally, like CLI. Originally, when it was built, when it had three commands, CD and get and set and whatever. Like it was useful to whom? People on the Mac. Yep. Developers are big because S SPFX was the thing that it was the first model that we have in 365 that would enable non-Windows developers or developer per developers on non-Windows OSs to develop for 365. In the past, yep. it was Windows only. SPFX opened it up, but it also created an issue where people on the Mac like, okay, I want to try these new, new cool things, but I can't. Yep. Because there is no tooling for me, so I neither have to mimic uh, see, see some calls, which is like 
no, or I need some, <laughs> something else, right? So, so sure. like that was origin. Like originally, CLI was like, sure, it worked on any OS. Anybody could use it. It was open source available, but the target audience was 365 devs on a Mac. Yep. Well, it's a very small niche, especially then. Nowadays, what we see, majority of usage that we have is what? On Windows. Wait, yep. what? But if we thought about, let's make it for Windows. So like, why? They have PowerShell. Yep. They have PowerShell yep. with everything. They don't miss it. Why would they need another thing? But it's just yeah. something that evolved over time. But originally, our niche was the folks who have this itch that they need to scratch, and we give them a simple answer to their needs. So yeah. that was our focus audience, people who shared the same problem as we had. Yeah, which is really important. And then plus the fact that you, you need to go and tell those people that this is available so that they, yes. they're being interested in first on using it and then potentially uh, contributing back. Exactly. Because if you don't do that, uh, then how would they know? And, and that really comes down on the rinse and repeat if we go on the on the order of, of things. Because yeah. rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And what do we mean with that? What, what does it mean? What does it mean? Well, like rinse and repeat? Well, so first thing, like as We as use the term quite a few times. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, I think it's originally from Karate Kid. Or yes. was it yes, wax on, wax yeah, off, wax right? on, wax off, yeah. Um, but it basically comes down to the fact like, okay, we said that you start with the first thing you have to do is you have to get the idea out of your, your head. Cool, so you've done that. You put it out there, you told folks, hey, everybody in your audience, you told them it's there. What do you do next? You repeat. Yep. You do exactly the same. Every day, every week, every month for a long period of time. Yep. It's not a sprint. It is a marathon. Is you a have marathon, to do it. Absolutely. You have to keep doing that. Why? Because there is always new people. Yep. There is like there is a chance because there is so much noise. Whatever you say is going to be lost. Yep. Right. And is that like people's attention? Like people don't live your life. They don't. They they just because you're passionate about something, it doesn't mean that they they live with that too. So yep. in order for them, like you have to stay on top of their mind. And the only way to do it is to. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And maybe to, to, to the point where you feel like, I repeat myself, I feel like a broken <laughs> um, um, record. And that is yeah. basically the thing when you say like, maybe that is enough. And even then you're gonna say, but there's still new people. Yep. There's always and, folks who don't know about there's, it. There's old people who are moving to a different project and then your information might be useful for them. In previously, they were not interested, yeah. so they just didn't see it. And now they're actually the target audience. So, and yeah. and and in the rinse and repeat, really the consistency is the king uh, as well. Yeah. So making sure that you have a consistent, let's say, everything is coming out on a certain time frame. You have a, let's say, monthly calls, you have a messaging, you, you just keep on basically evolving the things because that pushes the, the boulder forward and forward, and then it starts actually moving much more yeah. faster and faster and yeah. faster. The key, key, one of the key points here is also to make sure that the people who are considering that, hmm, it looks interesting, but is it actually, are the people actually committed on doing that? Are they actually will committed it be here on tomorrow? The, will, will it be will, here will, tomorrow? Will, will, is will this be something next week? Yeah, absolutely. what I should be investing my time on? And, and an awesome example, which isn't an open source, but still a um, pretty close example to my heart is SPFX. Uh, SharePoint framework. Um, when we first introduced the SharePoint framework, first of all, um, there was a lot of debates. Um, maybe we should, well, it's fine. And there was debate on do we actually even say that it's a new model? <laughs> Or is it an evolving model on the yeah, on yeah. the SharePoint data model? And sure, it is a new model. Um, but there was a lot of kind of uh, discussions internally, and and some of the MVPs know the term of not new model, uh, which is actually kind of fun. Um, new, it's the not, not new model, new not new model. And uh, but but what what from a consistency perspective, when we started pushing in SPFX, um, it actually took one and a half years to catch. One and a half years until people we, we truly saw the usage to actually start uh, raising. The same actually happened with the Teams development SPFX. So it took a year for people to truly start thinking on uh, and being maybe read or having the readiness to start using the things and maybe Do their you have, mindset. Have an um, an idea why why it took so uh, long. Well, for the for the first step, I think the first step for the SPFX to actually get start uh, growing is is really the key is that people are thinking that is this something where I should be investing? 
is this actually just a, a new shiny thing what Microsoft introduces and then they will throw it away. So is this actually something what I want to build on? Uh, PMP PowerShell, really awesome example. It really the long tail or the reverse tail or whatever, whatever, whatever we'll call it. It took like two years until it started skyrocketing and now it's being used like a trillion times. Like in a way, it's interesting because like having one foot in the product development, product management space, I would say, well, it's the opposite because on your hand, like it's not your intention to bring something out only to kill it, yeah. but to keep investing in that on. you yeah. have to have evidence that is being yeah. used. So, That's true so, as well. so in reality, chicken and egg, right? Because like yeah. on your side, you want to see the usage and the usage will only come if there's commitment and commitment yeah. will only come if there's usage. Yeah. So how do you go yeah. about it? That's actually really interesting. Absolutely an interesting point. But I think it's a balancing act of, of basically balancing the marketing which is basically rinse and repeat and messaging and your your engineering efforts um, and then the, the the kind of community efforts together. So trying to balance out in the right optimal way where what, what where are we using our resources? Because even though you would have the most awesome technically advanced, let's say a a, a whatever software, if nobody knows about it, it's not going to make money because nobody knows about it, yeah. right? So the marketing and 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 is super important. So making people aware of what you actually have something, but then at the same time, there's the, the let's say the third impact, which is, for example, iPhones. Um, iPhones were not technically advanced. Uh, well, the first phone couldn't. Phones. The first the first iPhone, if I'm not mistaken, couldn't even uh, send text. Yeah, I think so. Too. Or yeah. or yeah. there was yeah. no copy paste or something like. It's yeah. like what? But it's the the kind of the technology marketing, and then the third aspect, which is is it an easier use or whatever is is more approachable, making the the product or whatever easily approachable uh, as as possible. And iPhone got it. iPhone obviously it's it's completely different scale of what we do within open source, but still, Symbian was a way ahead of the curve from a technology perspective. But Nokia doesn't have mobile phones anymore. All of that yeah. stuff is. Disappearing. Nokia access to the field, but that's a separate discussion. But that that is also an interesting aspect to it, right? So we agree that it takes time for things to settle to get the following. Yeah. But what if something does not? How much should you yeah. spend really into trying? Like, where do you draw draw the line and you say, okay, enough is enough. We pull the the plug yep. plug. In. That's a, that's a really interesting point. In the, in the PMP initiative, we, we actually have had numerous, let's say, initiatives, which we just, they didn't catch, so we dropped them. Um, because you have to be able to also drop them. But what is the, the metric? What is the, the decision uh, factor related on that? That's, that? that's a really hard thing. And maybe it's debatable. Uh, and, and also it comes back on, do you have the passion of keep on pushing that particular yeah. thing. Um, for PMP PowerShell, as an example, um, it, I think Irvin had the passion uh, of, of keep on really evolving that. And he had he really had an idea of this is going to be so awesome. And it takes time for people to actually uh, just accept that and understand the value yeah. of it. But then there, there's a good example of, of, of uh, what was it? Uh, I can't remember all of our old projects, but there are, there are older projects which just didn't catch any usage. They were there for a while. Nobody was contributing on it, which was actually one of the factors as well. There was, yeah. they, we were unable to build a team for it, so we decided to drop them. But, but, but it's also the thing that like, you can say, okay, so I've built a thing, the usage isn't there. Is it that people know a, and they don't care, or is it that people don't know or they do not get it? So, yeah. so, so in other words, is it tech fault or is it marketing fault? Yeah, or is it the? I would say that there is the third thingy, which is the the approachable, the the making it easily consumable, so to say, uh, which has a massive yeah. impact. It's not only about marketing and and technology. It's the the yeah. whatever is the magical third thingy, which is yeah, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah. Now, um, but yeah. So um, the fourth tip, uh, which we had uh, waiting, uh, <laughs> we had that actually fourteen when we started this uh, discussion today. <laughs> Fourth tip uh, is, is really around building a team, building a team to actually build the stuff together. Uh, because you as a, as a human being, you just, just 24, 24 hours, uh, seven days a week, you just don't necessarily have the scale. 
um, immediately if something is catching on, catching on, you you just run out of time all the time. And delegation is super important, but you can only delegate as long as you have other people who are actively involved as well. Yeah, and and, and, and you're really building that. Yeah, team and together. and I would rephrase it to say that. Oh, or, or I mean, maybe that's that's very de- depending on person. For for me, it's twice as much fun to be able to work together with somebody to geek out on something, talk yep. about some cool tech with somebody else who gets it, yep. than to do it by myself. Yeah. Because if I'm by myself, maybe usage isn't there. You're putting months of effort and it's not coming, and you have your your moments of doubt. If you're by yourself, you can sus I come to it and maybe you say you know what this is not going to work i will give give the whole thing up where yeah. if there's a, a team it's two of you it's basically the same way as going to the gym you commit to being to, like we're in it together and maybe there's yeah. three of you or four of you and there's a team and you really plow forward and if somebody's ill if somebody has personal things if, yeah. if you can support each other and also together you can do more absolutely but there's also like everybody brings their own experiences. I work at in different country than other folks who are on a team in a different company. I do different things. I talk to different, different customers. Cultures, different and Exactly. Yeah. And everybody brings their own experience, which also is like, yeah. huh, I, I would have never think of that. Yeah. And it's so awesome to actually admit it that this is so freaking cool. Like we yeah. can do so much more, but we can only do it. We can only do that if we are a team. And for that, yeah. You need to again get out of your own head. Yep, and and make it possible to team to actually transform. And and also the and in here it's it's really the key is to trust the other people, even though it it might be really hard. Um, but basically, it's your big, like you're and, you're giving away. You're like it's your yeah. idea. It was your yeah. thing. And it's like no no it isn't mine. Now it's ours. We yep. will take care of it. Yep, and that. That transition might be really, really hard, but at the same time, that transition is one of the keys. Also, if you think about just let's say companies which are being successful, or an idea building to a company being highly successful, they, they typically it starts with the one person or two persons, then you recruit a third one and a fourth one, and and yeah. all, and all of that process is about human beings, and that yeah. applies actually to open source projects as well. Yeah. So give it a shot giving the other people a chance, promoting the other people, making sure that they feel that they get benefits out of their contributions as well. Well, and also I, th- I think it's, it's actually like, to be honest, I think it's just exactly the same as, as any kind of work, any kind of effort, no matter if you build a uh, fence around your ha- uh, house or clean your car or do whatever. Yeah. People feel, love to feel acknowledged for their work and appreciate that their effort is up acknowledged yeah exactly yep. and and it's normal it's not like ah you know you're a kid of two i need to no it's a normal human being like if you do your work and nobody says anything you're like is it worth it yep exactly so exactly. so it's just a cool thing and then on the other hand think of it there are only 24 hours in a in a day yep. we work and we sleep so there's a big chunk of that already gone many of us have families partners and kids another yep. chunk gone from the little time that people have av- av- available, they chose to spend that time or piece of the time on your project. Yep. How cool is that? From yep. 20 million things that they could have done, watch Netflix, play games, surf internet, do 20 million. Yep. They chose they to help to, to move it forward. How yep. awesome is that? Yeah. And that's why why basically it's it's one of those things where the if there's a... a the best possible ways you can come up with of getting credits and promoting um, promoting the other people and helping and giving them back for the value and time what they're actually uh, fitting in is super critical yeah. uh, because that that will actually bring the whole team to grow to be a family maybe even which is a yeah. strong word but but it really no, it then mean, builds it's, it's, across yes, absolutely. cross continent cross culture cross uh, whatever uh, limits and uh, teams which are built with people uh, with different Ideas, like like Waldex said, yeah. and, and, and and one of, yeah, 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 go on, go on, go on. Go on. No, no, no. Go I'm on. just saying because this relates. This was the number five thing as well. So let's just put it on the text as well. So it, before it, be, before we okay. go to five, I think there is one more thing thing to add, right? Because when you work on open source, you have this unique chance, and I think it's a unique thing for for majority of us. There are companies who work distributed across the world, but but majority don't. 
Majority yep. still have offices or work locally. So if you go down the open source route, you have the ability to work with anybody across the world. Yep. And this is cool because it allows you to tap into the, the a talent and experience Absolutely. of folks with whom you might otherwise not be able to work, to work right? Because yep. it just doesn't make sense. But because you don't meet in an office, because you don't have face-to-face -face meetings, because maybe these moments where you see each other in person are actually very, very sparse. Yeah. For all this thing to work, there has to be one thing, communicate. You have to, again, get out of your head. People cannot read in your head. Yeah. And also, the more you can do it in a synchronous way, so in writing, not a call that, because maybe someone in Australia right now, there's already middle of night to, for, yep. for them. So they cannot, they cannot be here. Maybe they have personal things that, uh, that, that have a conflict with the calendar and meeting, right? So yep. the more asynchronously you can communicate, the more inclusive you are. And yep. that will also make you think about everything you have in your head, get it out there, get it out of your head, think about it. State clear. What is it that you're thinking about? What are your concerns? What are the different things you think we as a team should think about? Get it out there and let others chime in. Yeah. Over communicate, basically, like, to the point where you yeah. say, like, this is too much. I'm stating the obvious. No, it's obvious to you. <laughs> Nobody else knows about it because people cannot re read your head. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And 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 if you think about the smartest people in the world, like the the uh, let's say Apple founders or Stephen Steve Jobs, Jobs, and Steve Bill Jobs Gates. or or Bill Gates, and and to be able to be successful, you you really need to communicate to other people what are you expecting them to do. Um, that's also leadership, by the way, um, because then that helps on other people to actually well chime in and help because they know. The whole idea, they, 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 and they can benefit from the different perspective you already provided, and then they chime in, like Waldex said, uh, from their perspective. You know, I have cultural differences in Australia or in, in, in Africa or in South America. They might be different. Um, yeah. there, there's the different ways of communicating, different ways of scaling. If you want to have that worldwide scalability, you want to reach out to the local let's say, people, regional people, um, and they can help with that, if you can find them again. Building a team, growing a team, building a, a, a layers of, of things, so to say. Now, let's go to the final thing. Um, uh, this is basically a repeat of everything what was said already. The, the, the <laughs> tip number very five. Much, and again, it's rinse and repeat because the moment rinse you hit and one point, you will see, well, there is a reference to this first thing because yeah. it's circles. Like it's it's yeah. it's cycle. It, it definitely is. It, it, it is a cycle of things. And the fifth point is it's not about you. It's about them. Um, being the, them being your team, them being the audience who's targeted to actually use your stuff. Um, we what we've been trying to do with uh, with the BNB initiative from a day one is really around the fact that we we make sure that people who contribute, people who are active, we put them on a on a podium, basically saying thank you, thank you, thank you, because you help the other people in the world. Um, typically for free, um, based on uh, your free time, what you're having. In certain cases, certain companies, actually, they do provide time for people to contribute in open source projects, which is awesome. Wasn't the case when I started in Microsoft back in 2008. This kind of unheard of uh, situation and <laughs> transformation has happened. Definitely not because of us. It's the general industry uh, thing which is evolving. But it, it's, it's, it's really around making sure that people, under, people get acknowledged for their contributions and and yeah. i think Waldeck, you put it really well from the from the thousands of things they can choose to spend the time with they chose to spend the time for your project yeah so let's make sure that these people actually then get acknowledged and they feel empowered they feel grateful and they that we are grateful about what they're actually doing yeah. so super important and i guess so before we move on to other areas i think there's also this let's say the less uh, shiny side, side of open source. Yeah, I was just about to come to that. Right, as well. so, so you <laughs> are in the open. It's not about success always, right? <laughs> I mean, or, it, does, it doesn't come, it comes at a price. Yes, that's right? true. So yeah. you are in the open. You took the first step to get an idea out of your head. And then somebody comes and says, this sucks. Yep, yeah. And that will happen. That will happen for sure. It's realities of life, right? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, what? So, to you, what does it prove? Well, so the, 
whenever there's somebody who's actually um, is attacking you or you're as a persona or you as your products or as your projects, it basically means that you're doing impactful enough job and impactful enough things and actions so that other people start feeling threatened or they will start feeling basically that, well, uh, you, you, you shouldn't be getting this much attention and whatever, whatever it is. It means that you're being successful. Um, at the same time, you really, really, really need to grow a thick skin uh, because you will get stabbed on the back so many times and, and basically come down from the back from there and say, no, no, it's fine. We we'll keep on doing what we're doing. Um, one of the things what we've been doing also while diagnosis really well uh, in the in the BMB is that we always want to be the better person, always, because then there's nobody who can be truly mad at you because you have a completely poor uh, track record. Basically, you want to be the better person in every single debate. Basically, not be the bad guy. It was like there was there was uh, this interesting thread I recall on uh, Twitter where somebody asked a guy who runs number of, of things in open source like how do you how do you deal with uh, trolls because like these people really attack you and you spend all the time doing the work and like how do you deal with that like all this negative thing and it's like it's like and the guy's basically oh you say like okay and and then done and then don't say yeah. say anything else and and re, uh, re, response was like, no, but how can can you do that? Like it's attacking you. Is this and this? Like okay, and then go done. <laughs> <laughs> so but that, that's yeah. that's something. And to be fair, it's quite hard to actually learn to do that. And maybe that's experience. Maybe we get let's say more settled when we're slightly older. But it's one of those things where obviously if you, if you feed the troll, the troll gets bigger. And that's one thing. Uh, also, the fact that um, you should actually, like, like said, you should feel that you've been successful when somebody actually attacks you openly on the internet or anonymously on the internet, because that is a clear sign that you're making meaningful things. Yeah, people are basically coming and said or whatever they're saying. So, and I guess that there's also another thing, right? Because oftentimes. We perceive so like because like somebody says something, we add meaning to it. We make it a threat. Yes, we make true. it an attack. That's true as well. So that's is, really it, so well. is it a factual attack? Did, yep. did, did somebody said said literally you suck, or yep. did they maybe maybe have either a poor way of expressing themselves, or yep. maybe it's a culture thing where, for example, we Dutch are worldwide known for being direct. Where people yep. in America or elsewhere, where in a, in the world, are not, yep. right? So it's just a cultural thing that also, like, when there is no context, when there is no camera, no video, no picture, no person, no mimic, it's just text. Yeah, some emotions don't convey that credit. Like sarcasm uh, doesn't doesn't it doesn't go on through text, right? So you yep. really need to be clear. And majority of folks like. Imagine somebody works and they bang in their head head on a desk for hours and they're stuck and they they like type something in a really uh, brief brief way sent. I bet that if that person would spend half an hour more to like really reread and go through all that and send like really craft a re response with issue and template, it would be a different thing. But sure. that people is that sure. that person is stressed. Sure. But yeah, not, so that's not, and that, not at, at their best, right? Absolutely, absolutely, and and that's actually a really good point as well. So um, I, I, I've done this personally as well, where you're super tired, you're stressed, you're basically running out of time and everything, and then you read something which certainly wasn't meant to be attacking. Like, oh. it, it wasn't. Yeah, exactly. And then it's ah, defense mechanisms yeah. are coming in, and then the, then it responds, and then you read the thing one more time like oh maybe i shouldn't have responded like that it, yeah. it's one of those things where well sure it is a, it might be a culture of things things are pretty uh pretty straightforward as well on the messaging <laughs> um and, but or maybe you, people are tired and it maybe it's not meant to be an attacking way um or maybe it is and and there will be those moments as well where it is meant to yeah. be an attack um and it's just calm down back away from the keyboard Pre yeah. and then let's try to analyze yeah. what we actually do. And also another thing that I that I that I experience a lot myself is you would say like I've been working with PNP for what now three years, four years ish. 
And by now, I should have know, known everything about everything that we do, right? <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I don't. Uh, like, yeah. I admit, like, I use PowerShell, PNP PowerShell once every two months, three months. Yeah. I never know how to install and update the damn thing. Yeah. Never. Seriously, it's go to the point where I have one node with one command that I run to see, do I have the latest version? If not, how to update that? I don't yeah. know it. Yeah. Like, so it only proves the point. Even folks who, like, I know what PowerShell is. I know how it works. I know what command list is. I know what uh, arguments. I know all of that. Yeah. And yet, I don't know how to update. Like, so simple things. If you think about yeah. it, People don't read docs, and even if they don't, like they don't have your experience. They don't live and breathe this necessarily every day. So yep. it's really the simple thing, the basics. How do I do X? How do I start? How do I update? How do I install? How do I check this? If I have a question, where do I yep. rinse and repeat, right? The basics. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely, and on the on the on the final point, we need to go to the articles in a second. But really about the the, the building the team and everything else. One of, one of the things that we've been doing uh, pretty actually openly with PMP from a day one is that we're kind of building a brand as well. We're building a a common sense of let's say uh, acknowledgement, so to say, so that people can feel that they're community. part of the, the community. <laughs> and, well, that's, yeah, that's that's a good term for that. Um, <laughs> we're building a, a real community with the sharing is caring mentality, um, and we we live and breathe it. So basically, you really want to make sure that uh, everybody feels that same feeling, and they they feel that they are being accepted. Uh, it's being inclusive. People can actually come and go. People can come and go, and nobody's going to be mad. They contribute. They're going to be gone for two years. They come back. They contribute, and we're always being uh, thankful of them. Uh, but it's the mentality. Uh, and you, as a let's say a team lead or the open source project lead, you need to actually be the example. It really starts from there uh, of being the example because whoever actually started whatever the open source project is, which you're coordinating you are basically being the coordinator. You are the example of who they're watching. They contribute because they want to get acknowledged from you and, and you really need to act based on the, the rules of the game, so to say. Yeah. Huge. Uh, I think that's it pretty much from our list of five items with 45 minutes of discussion. <laughs> that's um, yeah, with the 15 is, minutes repeat as yeah, well. So. I think there is way, way, way more to go through. Absolutely. But like, like in reality, it comes down to this really, uh, you, could, you could even call it these uncomfortable truths where many efforts that we do on the PNP side are related to tech, are dev things. Like we, yeah. like there are PowerShell command lists, C, um, CLI, C, C some core, like all of that. It's very much dev. But for these efforts to succeed, you need a non dev work. You yeah. need to get out of your head. You need to communicate, marketing. You need yeah. to have a plan, le leadership, like all the different and, ingredients. And, and it might be that if you're the technical guy, Maybe you start growing the team on finding the non-technical guy who can help with being the human, uh, exactly. the, the, the persona, persona based uh, communicator. And but, even that, but even that comes with experience because it Absolutely. requires you to acknowledge your shortcoming, which is perfectly fine. Like no one is master in everything. Yeah. And, it, and, and I guess in a way it comes with either experience or age or both to say, you know what? I don't know this and it's perfectly fine. Let yeah. me find somebody else who does, and yeah. that person will be my partner in crime, and they will help, and together we will drive this thing forward, and it's perfectly fine. And it's like, and you will be hacking away with code, making cool architectural things, and like really super duper things, and that other person will ensure that people get it, that they yeah. understand why it is, why it's going to help them, why it's worth their time instead of watching Netflix or running. Absolutely, absolutely, and, and that way you have again doubled already your resources, so to say, exactly. because it's it's all about also making things happen. If it's only you making things, then you need to start making decisions. Then, do I now code today? Do I write some cool stuff, or do I do some promotions? Well, and, and that will be scaling. very much default. You will fall back to what you're comfortable with, yeah, which is that's true. coding. Yeah, that's true. Which would well. then which would then stand in your own way to grow it, because if you only code, 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 code. 
well, then you don't do these other things, which is explaining to people what it is, what's new, yep. why it's important, what have you shipped, why is it important, why is it there, how's that going to help them, how do they start? Absolutely. All the non cody stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, uh, let's get back on the, let's go to the articles and let's get back on then uh, on rinse and repeat uh, when we go through <laughs> our articles. So let me share my screen. Yep. Uh, let's do a quick uh, round of a weekly article. So this one was from Jared. Oh, uh, this is actually really interesting. Um, how remote work impacts collaboration findings from our team. Um, and I've seen this also from Microsoft side quite uh, closely. Um, the rise of 30 minutes meeting and other ways of collaborating, uh, collaboration is changing. So I used to be in the past, the only guy, there was 30 people in the, in the PM, PM meetings, 30 people in a room, and I was the guy in the screen. So, and sure, 60 minutes remotely, when other people are in a room, yeah, that's not necessarily fun. Uh, you, you cannot make that engaging everybody in the team however everybody in a video screen it's it's level setting and then you want to do it as efficiently as possible uh, so it is an interesting uh, interesting finding so people want to have shorter meetings let's go to the point move on uh, rather than debating on the room well and obviously you, in in a video screen you're missing that let's say the 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 you can see the person but you don't see the the body language that much right Mm -hmm. unless you're standing in a video sphere, which is quite rare. Anyway, so uh, our, our weekly meeting time suddenly jumped 10%, uh, so more meetings, which makes a lot of sense as well. Uh, longer meetings actually go down, shorter meetings go up, which is really interesting as well, uh, understandable. So, well, I, I, I think it comes down to like there are companies who've been remote, so I wonder with that, right? Because like the moment we heard that usage of teams like spiked yeah right because like everybody works at home that i wonder are we trying to mimic the way we used to work meaning as you say exactly in meetings yeah or like what if we would go to more asynchronous way of doing things and you would basically write things down sure for some things it's good to acknowledge but like i recall like at a few occasions i managed to do it in a way where i had had an idea that i i needed approval from our management team so what I did up front, I would create a five slide, slide PowerPoint deck, which wasn't meant as a slideshow, but as slides with text explaining my idea, the pros and cons, yep. three options, my recommendation. Yep. I would send the deck to them like three, four days ahead of time. Then I would plan a 10 minute, 10 minute call, yep. which we were done in five because everybody was like, so any objections? I think, no, 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 good. Okay, done. Yeah, but I, I think it's that's one of the things in your company, in Brancor, you've been working remotely already for years. Um, in Correct. Microsoft, this was a pretty, let's say, hectic, uh, all of a sudden situation. And tens of thousands of people are basically forced to work, start working from home. And we can actually see it uh, in these kind of organizations. Um, well, obviously, the, the country, Microsoft country level organizations, they've pretty much been working partly remotely already for a long time. But the Richmond was the one where you can actually see the impact. And then that has really spinned up then the, let's say, the morning uh, breakfast meetings and happy hours and team meetings and all of yeah. that stuff. And that's one probably one of the reasons why the amount of meetings actually jumped, because there's so many more additional meetings related on, I'm missing my social needs, I'm missing my social needs. But then when people get used to this model, I think it will actually go down. Yeah, because Actually, to be honest, I don't join on those social meetings that often because I'd rather work and get stuff done. <laughs> but it's debatable. It depends but on how many social meetings there are. Yeah, <laughs> but there was also also this interesting fact that I I think I've heard from from someone who you who used to work in the office eight hours. Now they work at home. They were able to do the same amount of work in four hours, and they're like, okay, so what do I do in the rest of the day? Yeah. Surprise! Welcome to yeah. working efficiently. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, quick check in one to one on schedule social meeting increased, and um, as we said, and there's there's a lot sense. of the role of instant messaging, number of times and search. Uh, so a lot of lot of additional uh, messaging as well, uh, which tries more. Well, uh, I think the Teams chatting features have have definitely increased at least in Microsoft and and every now and then if you send an email to somebody you nowadays get back a message which says sorry I no longer work in in, in Outlook if you have anything to do ping me in Teams <laughs> which is fair I think it's fair because um, it, the, the Outlook and inboxes in Outlook is just really hard to manage everybody knows this right 
But I don't then, know. Like I, I haven't used email for work for a long time. I don't know. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Now let's go on to the other articles. Uh, this one came alive uh, earlier today. Uh, Office 365 CLI version 2.9 is out. So do you want to do a quick intro? Uh, what was included? So this one? we have new version. We have improved the upgrades of SPFX project, removing Teams tabs, checking the status of your Microsoft 365 tenant, because like at times there might be unexpected decrease of services for, and you want to know about it, right? Yep. So we allow you to do that. Uh, validating uh, themes and also a bunch of new reports of the usage in Yammer and Microsoft 365 groups. Plus, we have a bunch of examples that that show how you use uh, CLI in scripts. Yep. Uh, so we have tons of new things, and and we and and we will have more and more improvements in coming month as well, right? So there are yep. things coming like um, easier way to retrieve objects uh, and sure that things are are created, authenticating with managed entity. So there's a bunch of improvements all over the place. So definitely stay tuned, tuned for um, updates in CLI. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Thanks for that one. Good. And uh, this one is a. Uh, this one came out last week, so we already talked about a week ago about the awesome Microsoft Craft Toolkit uh, day to day thingy and and kind of an article per day uh, from a MVP is typically. So this one is from Hugo Bernier, um, really around uh, the customizing of the components. So customizing the toolkit components and how you can modify the, the settings and configurations and then templates. So really good example where. We as a Microsoft, we expose uh, our MVPs to write on behalf of us the guidance and, and impactful stories around, okay, this is how you in real world use them. Because quite often, actually in Microsoft case, it's not like every single Microsoft, Microsoft uh, engineer has, has actually worked on a real world cases. It's just realities. They're engineers. They write code. They just it's a different uh, perspective. So great work from Hugo on this one and pretty long uh, article as well. So um, that's additional stylings and all of that. Now, uh, this one is from Jason. Uh, Jason uh, works on the on the craft tutorials and, and quick starts. Uh, so basically imp updates uh, on what's coming and updates on actually what's happening. It's really great to see that we're getting this, this level of communications also from Microsoft Craft Team related on what are we planning to do, what's actually happening, because this helps some people adapting uh, these capabilities. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, this one is from uh, Mary Jo Foyle, uh, and this one Microsoft makes more tweaks to its entry system of services in light of increased remote work demands. So, and it really focuses on, on adjustments uh, on the on the services um, for providing, let's say, a current service and and pre service uh, for for customers as well. So, a good yeah. article related on that one. So, and updates which are then referring to the official messaging as well and throttling. Uh, so, throttling is a nasty thing, but hey. It's the root reason for throttling is to make sure that uh, the computers hosting the cloud will not go down. So from that perspective, throttling is a positive thing, right? Yeah. But from an individual developer and service and, and, and API perspective, um, the experience might not be optimal. So yeah. uh, I think we as a Microsoft definitely, we need to work on the, as an example, on the, on the better throttling guidance and handling and all of that stuff so people can adapt on the throttling. So yeah. Because again, it is a good thing that throttling happens because it guarantees that the service is up and running rather than exactly. So, but we understand it's that it's hard anyway. Now, this one was from Rajman, actually from today. SPSX team stamps use React hooks to dynamically handle theme changes, and 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 Bartman is doing a really good job on on uh, demonstrating this also in life. Um, so, Valo Intranet is using um, SPFX as their extensibility tool when they write uh, Microsoft Teams tabs and and personal applications, uh, which which is an awesome choice, by the way, making your software aware of those teams changes. And I think that's actually pretty cool. Uh, really cool, really cool guidance on the on adapting on the on the theme changes in the, in the team side. Yep. Uh, implementing content integration in SharePoint framework using Azure DevSoft from Deeple Yine. Uh, so again, a nice set of guidance and, and screenshots. And the only the, the I, I really love when we have screenshots and step by step guidance of making some happen. The, the, the challenge always is that Azure is evolving so fast <laughs> that within two days, the screenshots might not match the reality. But 
having screenshots helps people to actually see it and visualize what's actually happening. So really good stuff on that. Yeah. Uh, getting started with Office 365 CLI, uh, Baldek wanted to actually cover this note. Kidding. Uh, this is a really old one. Uh, I think we were by an accident actually uh, showing. Oh no! This, so yes, yeah, so it, it is was good. Rediscovered again. So a while back, Brad put up the guidance, basically explaining CLI. How do you start? Basically, again, the base, the rinse and repeat. How do you get it? Like, what are prerequisites? How do you get started? What do you have to have? And all of that is based on Windows. So it's let let's say the place where you are le you might be less accustomed uh, uh, accustomed with Node. So I yep. think like this really helps basically going through the basic hoops of installing, installing, correctly, installing yep. CLI, connecting, authenticating, what are the different things yep. you have to have and so forth and so on. Yep. And again, screenshots, 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 which is really good so people can actually see what's actually happening here. Exactly. And uh, this one is from Giuliano and uh, DeLuca, uh, building a release pipeline on Azure DevOps for logic apps. Uh, so touching a similar topic as, as the previous one as well, but um, talking about the different templates and automation, uh, how to make things happen. Really cool um, and really detailed guidance as well with an example uh, definitions. It's good to see long blog posts um, because this helps some people to adapt to things and, and source codes available as well. So that's pretty cool. Cool. That's by the way, a good example. The source code is available, but I'm not sure if that is an open source initiative, but anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> But of course, it's great to have a source code available uh, as such. Now, how to use jQuery with SPFX projects. Uh, so getting started uh, on using jQuery with SPFX projects from Xiao Ferreira, um, kind, of, kind of explaining the processes and what do we install. And he's using actually BMP SPFX, um, which is a great way of actually getting started on using things because the BMP SPFX uh, generator extends the out of the box one. So it's under the hood, it's still using the out of the box one. But you can do stuff like uh, include jQuery, include craft definitions, DMPJS, and and all of that stuff. So that's actually pretty cool setup of really yeah. speeding up the adoption or your development. Video series on building image search uh, center in SharePoint using Azure Computer Vision and Power Automate from RAM. Pretty cool looking stuff. Uh, really, really great uh, kind of a. Uh, how to make things happen and, and, and automate stuff with the metadata and multiple videos as well. So really, really, really great stuff from RAM. And more and more we see these kind of scenarios where we're adapting the machine learning and artificial intelligence to analyze the documents. And, and there is a project Cortex is coming out pretty soon as well because that's the native out of the box capabilities which are doing something similar as well. So pretty cool. Yeah. Using PMP provisioning engine to populate SharePoint user profile properties from Gautam uh, as well. So basically, what are the different options of, of uh, adding additional attributes on the user profile? And this is the old SharePoint user profile, by the way. Um, we are there's an ongoing discussions on on having an in M365 user profile that's coming sooner or later. I think we had an even a session in Ignite on that. Hmm. For those who are not aware, and I know that, that not that many people actually saw that session, but still. Export PMP reusable controls from SPFX library component. Um, so basically getting the controls uh, and looking into and reusing the controls uh, um, in your implementation. So true library component. So yep. pretty cool as well. And styling uh, SharePoint framework components using CSS and, and a JavaScript approach. We'll have a live demo on this one pretty soon in the community course as well from uh, from Sergey. Uh, I think it's Sergey Andrew who's actually doing the live demo as well. So really cool. cool stuff explaining how to make things happen. And then this one was from Mike Hummel, React Hooks and Office Development, bringing it all together. Uh, really cool article and, and a long one as well, really explaining in detail how to set up things and getting started on using things. So really, 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 really awesome stuff. Thank you for this one. Trivial being one of the companies who let their employees actually actively contribute in the open source as well. So thank you for Sweet. that. Sweet. Now let's get back in the in the rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. So <laughs> coming back on the five things. What number one thing? Get the ideas out. Get the ideas out. Get the ideas out in a format where people understand what how awesome your thing is, right? Uh, how yeah. how awesome the stuff is, what we're planning to do. The number two, target the idea for the people who need it. 
people are not going to find your GitHub just because it's in a GitHub, the repo, just because it's in a GitHub. It's an internet, they can find it. No, they don't. There's so many other things in the internet. Um, I think even in YouTube, I think most of the videos are actually getting like one view um, or whatever, because people are uploading so much stuff. Yeah. So it's not like people can just find it if it's in the internet, you need to actively promote stuff. Now, rinse and repeat is really around the fact that making sure that people if they miss the one message, then you you will then basically rinse and repeat. You keep on evolving. You have a consistent communication channels. You basically have a consistency in the project. People see that the project is ongoing, moving forward. People are being active. So that means that I can invest my time uh, on this project rather than is it already dead? Is somebody doing something? Nothing is happening. Why? Why is yeah. that? And then building a team because that's how you scale. That's how you can delegate. That's how you make and make other people. Uh, interested on on being active on the on the team as well and the last one it's it's not about you it's about them in both from a team perspective and also from a customer consuming perspective of the project in the last words from you uh Walder. a lot of them all of them <laughs> all the words all of the words um, yes yeah it's 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 an interesting thing because if you think about it like leading an effort an open source initiative it's very much, it's not that much different than building a product. It's yes. exactly the same thing. Like or, if, or, if the background or, you have, you're coming from pro projects, then you will be, you might be looking very much at this start. Where does it end? And it doesn't because yes. a product is never finished. Sure. There's always new ideas. Things change. Like we are in the IT. There is a new update to Microsoft 365 every week. There's always new stuff to work on. So it will never end. So yeah. it's a long game, right? It's not a sprint, it is a marathon. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. And there's also this thing where is the balance of the tech and non-tech stuff. And you need to have both. With only one, you will not manage because either you will have very strong tech that nobody gets or you are all talk and no work. Like there is not, nothing to back up whatever you say. Yeah. Right. So you have to have and you have to have them them in balance. And oftentimes it requires multiple people on a team and building up a team through uh, non-technical folks, too, or folks who have affinity or at least interest with the other things as well, who are interested in writing posts, being active on social, answering issues. Yeah, because documentation, they, guidance, yes, samples, exactly, all of that exactly. stuff. Yeah. And you yeah. you need you need all of that. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and and building a open source project or a product is not actually that far from building a community, not only community even in, in, in the virtual world, but real world communities. It's all about human beings. It's all about finding the right people and other people, similar minded people, and then making sure that people understand and they want to come to the community. They want to contribute on the community. They want to exactly. be part of the community as well. So, yeah. but cool. I, I think that's it for now. Um, I think we can talk more than enough. Yes. Yeah, I think <laughs> we, and we even talked 15 minutes um, before we started recording, which is actually kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> We're so passionate. Let's get started. Let's get started. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but I, I think the main point here is that sharing is caring um, <laughs> as it well. Is. But it, it, it's one of those things where we're if we want to be successful as a community and if we want to build, I, I think as a human beings, at least for me, it, it comes so naturally it's just sharing because then other people can benefit out of that stuff. And, and that that's actually great because then we can build the community is much smarter when we build stuff together rather than competing, which is actually, a really yeah, actually important. The, the interesting thing is I think there's a pro proverb, I think it was in Africa originally, where they say, if you want to go quick, go alone. If you want to go far, go with others yeah and and that's like interesting thing like i recall like back 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 in my days i had a discussion with my manager and it's like no you need to you need, you need to rally up the rest to do like like you're going real really hard but you leave behind every, every, everyone else like you, you you need to get them up and i was like yeah but they don't want to go up and i was like no no and it's like it took me really years for this to click and call me thick yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It, it really took me years to realize well maybe like sure it's not for everybody like not everybody ticks the same way but on the other hand you cannot say well no one cares because that requires as you say showing up explaining yeah. what you have in your mind explain why it's interesting and then once when, when someone says like 
I get it. But it isn't for me, which is fine. And it's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. But it's the first thing, like, do they get it? Do they really yeah. understand what drives you and why is this good for us yeah. as a group, us as a community, us as a company, whatever? Yep, yeah, absolutely. And then when you when you get the people, actually, you spend the time with the people and you get the other people, then you can actually go far because yeah. you have multiple people helping the, the thing to be super successful. So. And it's so so much more fun and you learn way more. So Absolutely. It's Absolutely. a win-win for everybody. Absolutely. Cool. I think that's it. Thanks everybody for watching or listening uh, in the podcast format. And we'll be back with a new PMP Weekly within a week. And next week we'll have a visitor already queued up, unless I'm completely mistaken. We'll see. So... <laughs> <laughs> But thank you everybody for watching and please, please, please keep the feedback coming. If you have ideas, suggestions or any other feedback, uh, let us know uh, if you like the topic which covered today uh, or have some ideas related on the discussions, just participate uh, in the in the Twitter as an example uh, around the, the on the discussion. But that's it for now. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye.